Welcome to Triggered Wrestling. I'm Brian Garcia. We've been on a big hiatus vacation following Collectible Stampede. We were, I don't want to say all wrestled out, but Jesus Christ, we were so busy. We're finally back. We're here to talk about all the wrestling on the week. We talk about AW Collision. We talk about NXT, Great American Bash. We're here for it all. We're here to talk about CM Punk and the new AEW X Championship, which is now, according to my count, the third, count it, the third AEW World Championship now. So we're here to talk about it here on this episode of Triggered Wrestling. Triggered Wrestling is so awesome all the way around. That gets me triggered. Ooh, okay, well, let's go with the bad trigger right now. See, I'm a, I'm a fan of all of it. We'll force you to watch Trigger Wrestling. What's up, Adrian? What's up? What's up, man? Um, let me correct you there just one bit. Uh, no vacations here, no days off. Um, yes, we haven't been recording, but we are releasing out content when it comes to video YouTubes, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Make sure to give us a like, comment, and follow at Trick underscore Wrestling. That is on Twitter, Triggered Wrestling everywhere else, Instagram, Facebook, Apple, Spotify, and YouTube as well. Yeah, we were not recording podcast episodes, but we were releasing other types of content so we're back to a regular recording schedule a lot has happened in wrestling the last couple days but it was nice meeting all of you fellow listeners this weekend or a couple weekends ago i should say but collectible stampede my god what an event once again collectible stampede located at taqueria guadalajara what's the address adrian six west court street woodland california 95695 home of the best burritos in woodland california and outside of sacramento california as well man it is definitely i don't know the best even though it's delicious food i would say that is for sure the giant biggest burrito in all of california Yes. So, Adrian, besides that amazing event that we had, one of the key topics that kind of got brought up, and it's something I've been seeing online a lot lately, why does every Mexican wrestler have to be compared to Rey Mysterio? So, like, whenever anybody gets brought up, Hijo del Vikingo, Santos Escobar, why does everybody mentioned as the next Rey Mysterio? Will we ever see another Rey Mysterio again? That... I'll tell you why. You know, ever since Rey Mysterio left the WWE the first time, I believe it was what? Uh, I don't have my notes here in front of me. Spitballing, but he left WWE at a certain time, I believe in the 2010s. Vince McMahon and company were out there trying to get the next big thing, which is the next Rey Mysterio. They had people like, um, was it, Sin Cara, formerly known as Mystico in CMLL. Then they had the fake Sin Cara, and Unico was underneath that mask. Having said that, there is no replacing Rey Mysterio, no matter who it is, no matter what kind company i will say this though for a while after lucha underground a lot of people dubbed ray phoenix as the next ray mysterio ray phoenix was the closest thing to ray mysterio that we've seen here in the united states but ray mysterio is in a class of its own a lot of people like that like to name drop hijo del vikingo a lot of people on the internet like to call hijo del vikingo the next ray mysterio and i don't see it bro i don't see the comparison I personally don't think we're ever going to see another Rey Mysterio type wrestler, but not because nobody's talented enough. But continue your thought, Adrian. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll say this. I will never compare nobody to Rey Mysterio. I will say that Hijo de Vikingo has similar attributes to Rey Mysterio Jr. as he was coming up when he was down in Mexico and in the Indies. Hijo de Vikingo is just as small, just as fast. A lot of people like to say he's better in acrobatics, tope suicidas, high flying dives. But here's the thing. That's not all when it comes to wrestling. Rey Mysterio just had that style, had that flair, made it look so fucking easy. And I think Hijo del Vikingo, when he does a, a spot, he waits too long in order to perfect that spot. And I think that's what's taking some of his style away compared to Rey Mysterio. But, I mean, the closest one to Rey Mysterio right now is currently Hijo del Vikingo, but nowhere near as close as Rey Mysterio. I would agree. So, just with the whole fluidity of it... It just looked so effortless. It looked good. It looked great with anybody in the Lucha atmosphere. El Guerrero, Psicosis, Junto Guerrero, you name it. He had that fluid style. Nobody had really seen that type of style so fluid before in the United States. And I think that's what's so memorable about it. Nowadays, I, anybody can essentially do that kind of style. And this is going to be taken completely out of context. It was a similar conversation that we had with Dios del Inframundo, formerly known as Drago. So we had the pleasure of uh, bringing him from the airport in San Francisco, spent 
pretty much all day with him. Great guy. Thank you very much for spending your time with us and spreading your knowledge. But this is taken completely out of context. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias si estás escuchando. But uh, back to what I was saying. One of the things that he said that resonated a lot with me was, nowadays, it's not about who can do the best lucha, who can do the best match, make it look the best. It's about who can do the biggest flips, the most spins. <laughs> That's what draws the money now. So, Hijo del Vikingo, I think he's great and all. He does all these acrobatic things. He needs to work possibly on making it all those things more into the match as opposed to just spots, quote unquote, make it work into the match, make it look more fluid. But yeah, I don't think he's Rey Mysterio. Uh, we'll, we'll probably never see anybody kind of like Michael Jordan. Will we ever see Michael Jordan again? Who knows? Probably not. But we have LeBron James, who's completely his own beast. We'll probably never see Michael Jordan. We'll never see Rey Mysterio. It's true. Yeah, that is true. So I guess what I'm trying to say is stop comparing everybody to goddamn Rey Mysterio, bro. I'm tired of it. Yeah, Rey Mysterio is in a class of its own. You can name other people. Everybody wants to be the next big thing. I mean, <laughs> we have somebody that was dubbed the next Brock Lesnar or the second coming <laughs> of Brock Lesnar by NXT personnel. Yes. And the man is a flop. Bro, and then he was also, when he got signed to AEW, he was like, man, those WWE people don't know yeah. what they were missing out on. <laughs> and then he's out of the company now. <laughs> they dodged a the bullet, <laughs> both companies. Yeah, man. Well, at least WWE <laughs> didn't put him on, like, TV, TV. You know, they put him on NXT, not even as a wrestler, as, like, a background character. Yeah. AEW, they debuted him, part of the mogul affiliate says somebody that's going to be something. But no, he's Gonzo. <laughs> Yeah, that was a that was a that was a flop, uh, a hard flop for Tony Khan, and well, not really for AEW talent, but mainly for Tony Khan. Yeah, mainly for Tony Khan because God dang man, that guy. I don't know, I don't know. Poor. I mean, I w I wish him well. Wish he gets a good job somewhere. You know, who I don't wish gets a job somewhere is my boy Ryback, who still has this blocked on Twitter or on X, whatever the wow. fuck it's called. I'm just kidding. Right back. Hope you're all good, bro. Moving along, Adrian. So one of the things I said at the beginning of the show, we'll get to, which is CM Punk in the X Championship. Anything you want to talk about this week in wrestling? There was a lot. There's NXT, Great American Bash. Um, starting with Raw, it was, uh, I don't know what the hell was up with Raw. Usually it's watchable. Not all of it. This week was basically a dud. And I would say probably similar with Rampage and Dynamite. They, they, they were not it. Those shows were not it this week. Um, but they did have their lows and their highs. The main event with Gunther and Drew McIntyre. Nine minute match. It was a pretty good solid match. Can I say the same about the rest of the show? Absolutely fucking not. I mean, let me just pull up some stats here real quick. While you pull up those stats, it felt like they were in go-home mode to SummerSlam a week early. That's what it felt like to me. Yes, that's the thing. Yeah, and it's like we, we still have another week. We have a similar Cody Rhodes promo that we've been building up this match since the night after WrestleMania. You, Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar had two matches together already, and we knew the third one was going to come at SummerSlam. We didn't need these these five weeks, ten minute promos and five minute segments. Just make the match and move it on. Keep it moving. Let's talk about more recent stuff. I'm sorry. Under Fire, the AEW Women's Division. That's something we were talking about here a lot recently here in Triggered Wrestling, they have a lot of women in the locker room, both AEW and WWE at the time. But for some reason, both companies are not focusing on the women's division. Like, for example, um, Britt Baker and Taya Valkyrie. It's a cold match. There was a lot of backlash that Taya Valkyrie got online the next day. She did. You know, and it wasn't even about the match. A lot of it, I think if I was reading correctly, they were talking about her weight, talking about other yeah. stuff, which is bad. I mean, these women are very experienced. It was a bad match. We all have bad days. A couple botches. We're not here to call it botches. Yep. You can see them online. Everybody has bad days. Yeah. If I was going to have a bad day, I would say that this was a, a bad, bad day. And it just happened to be on national TV in front of everybody. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, you see, we have the bad match is one thing. I can live with the bad match. The, the thing I can't live with is just how poorly booked they are. Yeah. And like moving on to Raw of last week, we had a rematch between Becky Lynch and Zoe Starks. The first match was great was good. It had a lot of botches, but it was decent. It was watchable. The second match was mid. <laughs> Wasn't as cool as the first one. <laughs> Wasn't as fast paced. <laughs> maybe maybe they told Zoe Starks backstage, hey, 
made a lot of botches, you made a lot of mistakes, camera cut all of them, cool it down. I'm sure that's what they did, but if you're going to have a rematch between Becky Lynch and Zoe Starks, have it be better than the first one. You know, it's like one week you give us a good women's match, the next week you give us a poor one. If both companies want the women's division to be consistent and watchable, put some effort in it, you know? I mean, I'm going to disagree with you, bro, because I mean, at that point, is it is it the booker's fault that they're having a bad match? Whose fault is it, bro? Is it the producers? Whose fault is it, bro? Oh, no, I mean, I know we don't blame nobody here in this show, bro. This guy, come on, bro. Anyways. Well, I mean, to be fair, to be fair. I, okay, for example, Britt Baker. She's a great, talented wrestler. Same with Bianca Belair. But for some reason, those two women can work really well with people, with some individuals. And then the next week, they have horrible chemistry with another woman. To be honest, I, I don't even know how to answer that question. You know, me and Kaylin were talking about Britt Baker's matches with Rio, um, Hikaru Shida. Those are some great matches. But for some reason, Britt Baker had zero chemistry with Ty Valkyrie. Um, Bianca Belair has had numerous matches that are good, memorable. But when she faced off against Alexa Bliss, there were a lot of botches. Bianca Belair in a triple threat versus Becky Lynch and Bailey. All three women are former world champions. It should have had a good match, but it was a sloppy. I'm going to interrupt you again bro i don't care about the matches matches can be sloppy i'm okay with that what i can't live with is the booking like they book Britt baker the one woman's match that entire episode and it's less than 30 seconds bro that's the problem i have you can yeah. you can have bad matches that's fine yeah. i'm okay with it but the fact is that these women aren't even given the time of day in aew in wwe they get more opportunities just because it's a three-hour show but even then it's four minutes here two minutes over there it's very sporadic yeah a few weeks back we had a women's match on raw it was between nikki cross and Shayna baszler nikki cross was out of action because she was getting her degree the minute she gets her degree and goes back to wrestling she loses a match in under what a minute like that's literally her graduation gift <laughs> a squash match <laughs> Like, I mean, I don't understand. It's like Nikki Cross is a former world's champion. She's a former tag team champion. Are this is how they treat their former champions? I mean, I know they're trying to build Shayna Baszler to look like a badass, but at the expense of a former world champion? Where, where's your problem with that when they do that on AEW, bro? When Britt Baker gets squashed in under 30 seconds, best believe I will have that triggered energy. This guy. Hmm? The only one I can think of is CM Punk in that Rocky 3 storyline with Moxley. They treated him like a goof. Something that I did quite enjoy, and a lot of people are going to talk shit about it, is the NXT women's match from Great American Bash between Thea Hale and Tiffany Stratton. It was a good match. People are going to hate it because there's like little missteps here and there. It was a good match. People are going to kill the ending of it with them throwing the towel. I liked it. It brought me back to Bret Hart versus Bob Backlund. Bret Hart versus Bob Backlund. When Owen Hart threw in the towel when Bret Hart was in the crossface chicken wing, that's what it reminded me of. So I applaud these women and Shawn Michaels fucking booking of NXT. Tiffany Stratton is 24 years of age and the other woman from Chase U is 19 years old. So this is the youngest women's match of all time. Thea Hale? Yeah, she's 19. She's super young. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this match has a bunch of rookies in here. And again, if you're going to argue about botches, I mean, why? Why? I mean, you see their ages. They haven't been in the business that long. They will improve their skills, their talent, their mic skills, all of the above. So right now, we're only getting a glimpse of their careers. Just wait in 10 years from now. They're going to be big stars. Exactly. And they're going to be big stars, man. They, I mean, Tiffany Stratton already getting pushed to the stars in NXT. Thea Hale's super young, and she's got good promo work as the member of Chase U. But, which brings us back to this part that got me extremely triggered, my guy. I was sitting at home watching AEW Collision, and then there's a couple things. One of them, minor. I love Andrade, great wrestler. Why is he in a ladder match fighting for a mask that he doesn't even use? So we'll talk about that after if you want to, Adrian. I'm just throwing it out there. It's up to you. The thing that got me extremely triggered, my guy, is when I saw CM Punk lose two matches in a row to Ricky Stark. One a single match, one is a tag match. And then this guy goes in the middle of the ring, whips out his AEW World's Heavyweight Championship and says, I am the real champion. I never lost this. I got stripped of it and then whips out the spray paint and spray paints an X over the championship because he is straight edge and he is better than you is what he said. I got so much trigger energy. This guy, he could have come back 
with this gimmick to begin with, but you're going to have him lose two matches and then have him pull a goddamn Clay Thompson. So I live in Sacramento, California. I love the Sacramento Kings. Golden State Warriors are notorious, especially Clay Thompson. When they're getting smacked, <laughs> beat down 20 points, 35 points, Clay Thompson over here from the bench lifts up four fingers, reminding people how many championships the Warriors have. So this guy, CM Punk pulling Clay Thompson, lost twice in a row and has the audacity to whip out the belt and say, I'm the real champion, bro. I just saw you lost twice in a row. <laughs> so so that got me triggered bros over here pulling clay thompson then he says i'm the real world's champion says he's the best in the world mjf calls himself the best in the world as well right or better than you technically he calls himself yes. better than you baby right <laughs> so that got me triggered and then the third thing that got me triggered is that technically now this is the third world championship in aew you got the two world titles right the mjf one now cm punk's one and it got me thinking of the international championship the aew international championship currently held by orange cassidy isn't that considered a world's title because it's international no how explain it my guy so the Intercontinental Championship. It's a mid-card title, right? It's a mid-card title, but it's explained that technically Pat Patterson won a tournament between North American champion and South America champion. That's the Intercontinental Champion title lineage. The AEW International, I mean, it's, it's for all the countries. Am I correct? Yeah, it's basically like an Intercontinental Championship. Unless somebody sets the world title, somebody within the company, not a Mark Podcaster. Damn, don't you dare call me a Mark Pat. <laughs> <laughs> then, then I'll name it a world title. I mean, I'm not going to name something that it's not. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, well, I'm I'm a Mark podcaster, and I'm going to say that that's a third world title. Because if I hear international champion, I think the world. I'm okay with the all Atlantic. When it was all Atlantic, it made sense. It was countries in the Atlantic Ocean, including Japan, for some weird reason. That's not into the Atlantic Ocean. But now it's the all international championship. And that was never explained. So... Okay. I'm just trying to think. I'm trying to think if somebody ever explained it, if it was a world title. You're trying to think, bro, because you got exposed AF. The way they said is that they would defend this title doesn't matter the country, which, oh, means, yeah. which means it's a world title. That's why they have the flags. That's why they have which the flags. Which means it's a world title. I mean, was it named a world title? Are you naming it a world title? Or did you hear from Tony Khan or backstage person know that it was a world title? I heard that this title is going to be defended anywhere in the world, which makes it the international mm. championship, which would me, to me makes it seem like a world title. Okay, so, so let's say the United States Championship in both WWE, WCW can only be defended in the U.S. and not anywhere else, correct? Uh, it can be defended anywhere, but either way, it's only the champion mm, of the United States. Mm. So what does being an international champion mean? International means that all international talent. He's the champion of the nations. No mames. <laughs> I mean, all international <laughs> champions. I mean, you want me to explain something that I have no knowledge of? I'm just trying to expose the name of this title to the fact where it can be argued that there's three world titles in this company. It can, but is it? I'm arguing it right now, so yes, it is. Hey, Ooh, okay, hit guy. us up on Trig Wrestling. Is the all international title a third world title? Please comment, like, and subscribe because this is a good topic. I have no knowledge of this. Apparently, Brian seems to have cooked up something in his head. Could he trigger some people? Could he not? Find out. I'm triggered, bro. But either way, I'm more triggered about the whole CM Punk situation. Like, why does this fucking jobber for the last two weeks get the audacity to say he's the real world champion when he can't even beat jobber Starks? Let me, uh, say one thing. You're the guy that wants stories to be stretched out throughout weeks, right? I'm okay with this. I'm, I see, like I mentioned, I'm okay, okay. with long-term storytelling. So if you're going to include this in the whole metaverse of I never lost a championship, very similar to Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon at WrestleMania 10, which was same storyline. Shawn Michaels got suspended for steroids. Kayfabe, he got suspended for something. I forgot. Razor Ramon wins. He's the world champion. Shawn Michaels comes back. World champion. Mm. My bad. I misspoke. Mm. Shawn Michaels says he's the real intercontinental champion they have the ladder match to unify the belts that's how it happens but here why am i watching cm punk fight for right now two months and then now he claims that he's the real world champion two months after he came back you said it yourself first bro you're answering your own question when the man is on the bench and he's crying because he's losing he pulls out the good old oh i'm the champion oh we have four rings uh, i don't know why they did that but i will say this the whole what's in the bag was what the first episode of collision five weeks ago could it be a story could it not guess what it is a story they made it into something it is a repetitive 
story from WWF a long ago. It's also another one from um, Money in the Bank. The day CM Punk's contract expired at midnight in Chicago, walked away as WWE champion, had a tournament where Miz and Rey Mysterio were in the finals. Rey Mysterio won that match. Then that same night, Cena and Rey Mysterio had a match for the real WWE champion. Then the following week, CM Punk showed up. So you're telling me CM Punk is copy and pasting his own gimmick from WWE, bro? <laughs> Apparently. Man. God damn, my guy. All I know is for all you CM Punk marks out there, what's up with that? <laughs> I mean, here's the thing about those CM Punk marks. If they didn't complain about it back in the day, they're not going to complain about it now. Or if they are, then they're marks because they're always barking about one thing and quiet when the other company does the same oh, shit. Wait, so are you just calling me a CM Punk mark because I, I didn't complain about it back then? Oh, no. I um, mean, shit, you could complain <laughs> about it back then. I, I just didn't know that this would happen again with the same guy a couple years later, bro. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so brings us to this other thing that also involves cm punk we actually got requested this from our listener his name's hunter he actually messaged us and he gave us a good idea for a top five he said what are your top five matches of ecw and i thought even one better i said what about top five memorable moments of ecw mostly because there's so many matches in ecw and i was born in 1991 so by the time i got of age to like really get into ecw ecw is dead yes same and most of the time when i used to look up ecw was on youtube back when youtube was barely starting like not back a lot, when youtube was a dating site <laughs> jesus <laughs> that was it, it was bro we used to, people used to <laughs> people used to upload uh videos and be like hi my name's mark i'm 22 years old and i'm into fishing and i'm into this yeah you should be back then see the more you know my guys yeah it was around like what 2000 and eight seven nine around there yeah i mean ecw was not my cup of tea especially back when i was young and as i got a little older but once i got out of high school then that's when i started paying attention so i'm not really a big ecw fan but i do have a lot of memorable moments so do i dude because honestly i love wrestling and i did get into ecw quite a bit i even had a nintendo 64 ecw game i don't remember what the name was i do remember rvd being on the cover so if you remember the name of that I'm not going to Google it, but please comment. Let us know. Message us. Hunter, I'm pretty sure you probably know. But uh, so yeah, top five memorable moments. We're doing this as a combined list. And I'm going to start with the number five one, which is memorable to me because it's a lot newer. It's not even a good memory. It's just memorable. Top five memorable moments of ECW. I'm going to give you some backstory on this. I'm a huge Johnny Nitro fan. Johnny Mundo. John Morrison. Johnny TV. Johnny Impact. Johnny Caballero, Caballero, Johnny Blackcraft, anything Johnny, Johnny Nitro, whatever. I'm a big fan of him. Johnny Onyx, whatever fuck. Anyways, point of story being, I remember it was June 2007, Vengeance Day, Night of Champions. ECW just had a tournament. This is the brand new ECW because Bobby Lashley was just drafted to Raw. They had a tournament to determine the new ECW champion. It was CM Punk beating Marcus Corvon and they had Chris Benoit, controversial name, beating Elijah Burke to meet each other in the finals of this pay-per-view to determine who the new ECW champion was going to be. I remember watching this pay-per-view. CM Punk comes out first and then all of a sudden Johnny Nitro comes out and he is pumped. He is hyped. He was not ready to wrestle today. He was not scheduled, but here he comes out and wins. Later, we come out to find out that Chris Benoit passed away on Monday, Monday Night Raw. They had the tribute episode. And then the day after that, they find out everything that happened. So I remember that. It's a memorable moment. It has nothing to do with ECW, with everything that happened after that. But I remember this moment because Johnny Nitro won the ECW championship and turned it to John Morrison a couple weeks later. Was that number five or number one? That was number five. That's not number one, bro. Come on now. <laughs> number four. Um, I'll do this one. Number four. Memorable moment for me. It might be a goofy memorable moment, but it was still a memorable moment. Do rag Vince. How can you hate it? The man was ECW champion. The man thought he had it all. <laughs> he he was. He really was. So, Vince, it may be a controversial name, especially now or back then, too, when he said the N-word. But it was funny. It was great. A lot of people liked it. And a lot of people, I don't know, they had mixed reactions about the newly ECW. But I think that was a memorable moment to me. I mean, Vince, once again, booking himself to win stuff. So, Booker booking himself to win matches and book himself to be the champion, bro? Where have I seen <laughs> <Yeah>. that before? <laughs> A wink, 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 wink. 
Oh, here, the owner booked himself to win the championship. Yep. <laughs> uh, for number three, I'm going to go with the creation of, of ECW. It was August 1994. Eastern Championship Wrestling was the name of the company back then. It was Shane Douglas versus Two Cold Scorpio to determine who was going to be the new NWA champion. Shane Douglas beats Two Cold Scorpio and grabs the mic and fucking throws the NWA title down <laughs> and picks up the ECW title and says, NWA is dead. I'm an ECW boy. Eastern Championship Wrestling was now going to be called Extreme Championship Wrestling. And if that isn't the most hardcore shit I've ever seen in my life, I don't know what is. Because at the time, dude, it was NWA, dude. NWA. And I'm not talking about Ice Cube and Dr. Dre and Easy e here. I'm talking about the National Wrestling Alliance. I'm not talking about people with attitude. But these guys had the attitude, man. And Shane Douglas became the first ever ECW champion that day. So that's memorable to me. And I know, I know for a fact that you guys thought we we're going to get into a bunch of hardcore stuff. And we're getting to get there. So Adrian, what's your memorable moment here? My number two memorable moment has to be some hardcore stuff. Hardcore Heaven 1994 where Terry Funk and Cactus Jack teamed up. And the match was great. But the aftermath where the fans made it rain chairs. Luckily nobody got hurt. And I believe they fought Public Enemy at that time. Cactus Jack and Terry Funk. Luckily nobody got hurt. But just watch that YouTube video man. You see just the fans throwing chairs at the ring. People are underneath there receiving the chair shots. Thrown by the fans. If you were there watching it. They probably thought it was funny. If you were watching it from home. You probably thought it was dangerous you were probably concerned for somebody's well-being that right there is what ecw stands for man chaos extreme championship wrestling these guys literally put it on the line every time they stepped inside an ecw squared circle you know you can't go wrong with that one yeah and for number one it's gotta be born to be wired when sabu fought terry funk in a barbed wire match. It was August 1997 mm. at the ECW Arena in Pennsylvania. If you don't know this story, shame on you as a wrestling fan. If you do know the story, then you know what I'm talking about. My boy Sabu had a hundred stitches needed to close up this gash on his arm, and he was he fucking he taped his own arm closed from the barbed wire to keep himself from bleeding out in this match, and it was it was just it's a bloody mess. But Jesus Christ, man, like this guy essentially ripped his arm open, kept wrestling, taped it shut. It's fucking crazy. Like I don't I don't know what see, and this is the thing. Meeting Nick Gage, meeting all these hardcore wrestling fans, like to me. I don't like that wrestling. It's not my style. Yeah, it's not my it's thing. It's not my thing. But goddamn, these guys do it all. Like They put it on the line. They do. They do. And then we met Sabu. We saw him. Chill dude, bro. You would have never thought that he would put his... Like, seeing him now, I would be like, oh, there's no way that dude probably did that shit. But he did. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, luckily, he's 100% healthy right now. He's not suffering from anything that we know of. But I mean, the man is walking. The man is walking. And he's doing a lot of stuff on his Twitch channel. Or sometimes he joins uh, other people's Twitch He's pretty much doing his own thing, his own podcast, his own Twitch channel. He's over there doing his thing. So catch him out. I don't know why. If you want to see, he's like always with Roy. Like, I want to say he was like best man at Roy's wedding. Yeah, I think so. Yes. Roy, what's his last name? Lucier? Roy Lucier. We got a video with him coming out interview soon. So watch that when that comes out, please. And my honorable mention for this list has to be none other than ECW One Night Stand. The entrance of the Sandman. That was literally, to me, one of the best entrances of all time. It's up there. I wouldn't say it's in my top five or in my top three, but it's up there. Great. The fans were ecstatic. There was one fan that had a kendo stick and just started hitting themselves in the head. You had Sandman chugging beers left and right, motorboating a few females on the front row along with Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> You have the Dudley Boys running back and forth through the ring. The Sandman by Vitalica hitting in the background. The audience singing. Bro, watch it. Every time I watch that on YouTube, I have to watch it from beginning to end. Because it's just, it's, it's magical. It's something for the fans. Something for the wrestling world. It's a good memory when it comes to being a wrestling fan. Yeah, for my honorable mention, I'm going to go with every single bump that Spike Dudley took. Because my God, bro... We're talking with Ricky, and if you don't know Ricky, follow Ricky. You should see our videos with him on YouTube. He called it out. 
Spike Dudley's the bump king, bro. He did some yep. crazy shit. I don't even know if he's still alive, dude. I'm going to Google it right now. We're going to all fuck this he up is, together. He he's still alive, he right? Okay. Even after that, after ECW, he went to WWE and took some great bumps, chair shots to the head, Undertaker choke slamming him from inside the ring to the outside of the ring. I- Jesus Christ, man. He's still alive. He's 52. Oof. He don't look 52. God damn. He does <laughs> not. Just like how we were talking about Sabu, Spike Dudley, the same thing. Who would have thought that man was taking all those bumps back in the day, 10, 20 years ago, 30 years ago? God, these guys, man. I mean, I like to watch wrestling and have wrestlers, you know, be 100% healthy in and out of the ring. I mean, these guys just did it for entertainment, which is why sometimes I don't really complain when it comes to matches like this, especially nowadays. They're doing it for our entertainment, and if that's what you want to do, by God, that's what you want to do. I'm not going to get in it. I'm not in your life. I'm not part of your family. As long as you come out 100% healthy or somewhat healthy, I'm good. <laughs> just don't say you're doing it for triggered wrestling, bro, because we, we, we want you to make sure you're okay. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, but yeah, we are Triggered Wrestling. Follow us on everywhere. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. We're Triggered Wrestling. The only name that is different is our Twitter, which hopefully our boy Elon Musk can get on that and let us have some extra characters because right now it's just t-r-i-g-g underscore wrestling trigger underscore wrestling yep elon get on it bro yeah bro i know you got the power bro you changed the name of the company in like a day and infuriated a ton of people now we can't even call these things tweets anymore they're called x are you serious <laughs> yeah bro they're not called tweets bro, bro. this guy <laughs> But yeah, so I'm going to still call it Twitter for now because I don't want to call it X. <laughs> so we talked about Collision. We talked about women's booking. We talked about Collectible Stampede. We talked about our top ECW moments. I just want to let you guys know that there is a big thing in the works here at Triggered Wrestling. We're working on season two. Season two will be starting shortly. We're going to have a lot of things planned for you. We're going to have some guests. We're going to be maybe still focusing. We're still going to review episodes, but a lot of it's going to be more topic based. We're going to be talking a lot more in general about wrestling as opposed to just reviewing episodes. Uh, So if you want to be part of our guests, hit us up. Let us know what you got to bring to the table. We like talking to everybody about wrestling because at the end of the day, we're all wrestling fans. It doesn't matter if you like hardcore wrestling. Doesn't matter if you're like the biggest fan of stardom. Like we want to talk about it. Wrestling, we're fans of it all. We love it. And and we just love talking about it. The only thing we do ask is don't get triggered if we don't have the same opinions as you do. Because that's the thing about wrestling. Everybody can have a different opinion about wrestling. Sometimes the trolling is cool. It's funny. But when you can't handle a single jab to your favorite promotion or your favorite booker, that's when it's no longer fun. When people start delivering low blows just to get a laugh. That's when it becomes a little a little toxic. Have a laugh. Enjoy some some trolling. We do that over here. Uh, not as often as anymore. But, you know, that's what we're here to do. Make you guys laugh. Content for you guys. Talk about wrestling. Hell, what's his name? Ricky that you mentioned earlier. A member of the Barrio Toys Familia. Uh, suggested a few lists with us. So we'll look into that as well too. If you guys have any other ideas. If you listeners want to, you know, have a chat with us about wrestling. Want to get interviewed. Want to get asked about your top fives. Please make sure to look at our uh, website which is triggeredwrestling.com right there we have our calendar to all the events triggered wrestling is going to be at we have a few meet and greets at Barrio Toys we have Supreme Pro Wrestling here in Elk Grove California we also have Collectible Stampede 4 which is going to be in Woodland California 6 West Court Street 95695 I believe that's in October correct yeah it's in October See, and this is there's so much shit. So we have psychosis. We got Mick Foley October sixth at Barrio Toys. We got October eighth at Collectible Stampede at Taqueria Guadalajara, six West Court Street. We got a lot of stuff going on. So follow us. We've talked to so many wrestlers that hit us up on the daily, like it's ridiculous. So we're probably gonna get back to you guys and bring you on the show because I mean it's promotion for you guys. We like to talk about wrestling. You guys are obviously wrestling fans, so we'll get messaging y'all back because we can't get y'all all together at once. <laughs> yep, and we also. Have- have supreme pro wrestling on august 20th and they're actually um partnering up with alex's lemonade stand foundation for childhood cancer it's a charity event last year they raised uh approximately 2,500 they're they're looking to do five thousand dollars of donations this year 
Yes, they are. And there'll be obviously some champions right there. You have Jekylls, the SPW World Champion, Scoot Robinson. You have the former longest reigning SPW Champion, Drake Frost. Midas Creed is going to be there. Also, MOW's champion, Jacob Fatu. Oh, Jacob Fatu will be there as well. Yeah, bro. Jacob Fatu. Uh, and Juicy Finau is going to be there, I'm assuming. Yes, he is. He is going to be there. The SPW Tag Team Champions are also going to be there as well. Chupi. Bro, I'm a fan of El Chupacabra, man. That guy, he can wrestle. He has a gimmick. He has a style. I like him. Yep, yep, yep. We definitely like those wrestlers. So that brings us to the end of it. Thank you very much for listening to our Trigger Energy. We are, well, I'm Brian. That's Adrian. Yes, yes. Thank you for listening to us. Please be sure to look out for other episodes coming out later out this week. And if you haven't so, please go look at our TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram for more content as well. We have top fives. We have interviews with guests. I asked Will and Kevin. Does the world need to see an Usos versus Young Bucks match? Let us know why on YouTube or on Facebook or on Instagram as well. And how many super kicks will we see in that dream match? 100, 150, 200. Please, that's what we like to do. We like to chat with fans about wrestling. Hit us up. Most importantly, stay triggered. Bang, bang.